a party of people, before we begin, I just want to let you know that while I do go pretty in depth in this product review, I'm in no way, shape, or form sponsored by Faberware. Also, I know I'm pronouncing their name wrong. I just wanted to bring you a very upbeat and fun and very informative review about one of the cleaning products that has changed my life. So I'll go ahead and let past me get into the video and I hope you enjoy. Oh, but real quick, before I do let past me take over, don't forget to subscribe. I've noticed about 90% or more of my views come from people who aren't subscribed, so I don't know what you're waiting for, but go ahead and go down below and hit the shiny button. All right, take it away, me. Hello, party people, and welcome back to So Square and Cubed. I'm Jamie. Hello. I feel like I don't need to tell you that my kitchen is quite small. You're practically seeing all of it here. And because of that, it doesn't really function in a lot of the ways that I need it to. You've probably seen enough of my cleaning content to know that not being able to keep things organized leads to a lot of cleaning, which then leads to a lot of cleaning burnout. But I have found the solution to all of my problems. Well, one actually very specific problem. Small apartments, cheap apartments, and any variation thereof are usually missing amenities in order to provide affordable housing. One of the easiest amenities not to include is a dishwasher because most kitchens already have a built-in sink, like so, and as long as you have a sink and access to water, you can wash dishes and that's perfectly fine. But, what if your apartment is like mine and you have a very deep sink with a very short faucet? What if your countertops aren't necessarily high enough for you to wash dishes comfortably? What if you absolutely hate, with a passion, washing dishes by hand? Enter the Fiberware Countertop Dishwasher. More specifically, this is the Fiberware FDW05 AS BWHA Complete Portable Countertop Dishwasher. In any case, I'll be getting into all of the nitty gritty details of this dishwasher as it were, but after having used it the past three or four months, I can honestly say it's the best purchase I've ever made. And if you have the space for it, I highly, highly recommend it. Speaking of space, it's not exactly little. It measures 17.3 inches deep by 16 and a half inches wide by 17.3 inches tall. I would really, really only recommend this machine if you are a absolutely certain it will fit under your cabinets without causing an issue opening and closing them. And B, if you're 100% certain that if it's gonna be pushed up underneath your cabinets, that you're gonna be using the water inlet that comes with the machine. Otherwise, the tank fill is on the very top, so having it underneath a cabinet isn't really practical. Along with that, make sure that your countertops are actually deep enough to support a majority of the weight of the dishwasher. Mine are like just barely big enough and uh, the dishwasher kind of hangs off a little bit, but it's all right. Now let's talk about the inputs and outputs of this washer, starting with the output. Dirty or used water is drained from the machine out through the back and using about a three and a half foot long tube, you can drain it into your sink, a bucket, whatever it is you'd like to use. That being said, if you do choose to use a bucket, while there is a suction cup intended to hold the tubing in place, I recommend leaving about a foot and a half of the tubing to sit in whatever you're draining the water in. You don't really wanna stretch it out to its max so that it can barely reach. Uh, because water might go flying everywhere. Now I did mention earlier that it does have a five liter built-in water tank so that you don't necessarily have to use the water inlet. That's actually one of the features that drew me to this machine in particular. However, it does come with some accessories so that you can hook it up to your faucet. Personally, I didn't want something hooked up to my faucet full time and I'm quite comfortable filling up the water tank using the provided pitcher. However, if you do choose to use the inlet tubings that this comes with, please, please keep in mind that they do not send adapters with this particular model, so you may have to go to the local hardware store to find some sink adapters for your particular faucet. If you're like me and you choose not to use the inlet tubing, that's totally fine. They give you a 1.8 liter pitcher that you can use to fill the machine 
In total, it takes about three pitchers if you fill it completely full, but me personally, I usually fill it about halfway so that I can get a perfect pour without spilling. That being said, trying to get the perfect pour is quite difficult, and even the user manual advises that splashing is not only possible, but highly probable. When filling the water tank, whether you're using the inlet tubing or the pitcher, make sure that the machine is turned on before you start filling the tank or turning water on. And you'll want to listen for the rapid beeping to let you know that your tank is full. Be aware that it is incredibly easy to overfill the machine, especially if you don't have the machine turned on. And when it's overfilled, it will leak out the front. So my personal recommendation is to only fill the machine after you've loaded it, before you put in your detergent, and when you're ready to turn it on. When you're ready to use the machine, you have a lot of options here on the front. I'll put the full details here on screen, so please feel free to pause and read at your leisure, but I'll just go through them very quickly for you. The glass option is intended for lightly soiled, delicate dishware. The fruit option is intended for hard surface fruit. The baby care option is suitable for washing and sanitizing baby bottles using steam. The rapid option is a short wash cycle intended for lightly soiled dishes. It's also my personal favorite. The normal wash option is intended to clean normally soiled dishes. The air refresh option is able to be implemented on any of the cycle options that you choose, and it's intended to help the drying performance or to prevent smells of standing water if you're not going to be available to open the washer as soon as it's finished. Do note, this washer does not actually have a complete drying cycle or drying function. Because of that, you may wanna put this washer where you can leave the door open so that your dishes can dry, or if you're like me, just get a dish drying rack and dry your dishes outside of the washer. Once you're actually ready to load and use the washer, there are some strategies you can use to get the most out of such a small space. They do include in the user manual a handy dandy little chart that shows you how you can most efficiently load your dishes. However, I have never been able to get my dishwasher quite as full as they show, though I suspect that might be because my dishes are actually quite thick as I use ceramic dishes and not your standard Corel type dishware. For my dishwashing needs, I usually remove the silverware tray so that I can fill up the dishwashing rack as full as possible. And then later on, I'll run a cycle for my silverware and a few glasses or smaller items here and there. When you load the machine, be sure to check as well that nothing is able to slip through the dish rack. If it falls to the bottom, it may prevent the lower spray arm from functioning. You also wanna check that you're not putting tall items right up against the upper spray arm. That'll prevent it from functioning as well. All right, so when we're locked and loaded and ready to run a cycle, there's a question of what detergent should you use? I would say it usually boils down to personal preference. However, after some research, seeing what people actually use in these machines, there can be some problems if you choose to use tablet-based detergents or powder detergents. Sometimes the machine can register undissolved powder or tablets as a clog, and you may have to do some finagling to get that error resolved. So armed with that power and that knowledge, I choose to use a gel for my dishwasher. Oh, keep in mind that if you do overfill the detergent, um, which is actually incredibly easy to do, you will wind up with a lot of white spots on your dishware. One thing to keep in mind is that as this is a portable dishwasher, it may not have the same cleaning power that you would be used to with a full-size dishwasher. If you leave relatively large chunks of food on your dishes as you try to wash them, you may cause a clog in the machine that will have to be manually unclogged. Don't worry though, the machine will display on the front if there is an error and you can always look up what the different error codes mean and how to fix them. Also something to keep in mind if you are going to put relatively greasy dishes in this dishwasher, you may notice there's a film of grease between the door and the interior of the washer itself. I usually get a paper towel and wipe it away and also wipe under the rubber gasket just to make sure that I get all of the crud out of there, otherwise it will start to smell a little. I have tried an egg test on this machine. I didn't quite have time to do it for this particular video, but if you have something that is quite stuck on, like egg yolk or maybe some sauces, you can use the normal wash cycle to generally get everything off. Otherwise, if you rinse your dishes briefly when you're done with them, they should be fine to go in on the rapid cycle. Me personally, I will just wet a sponge and get all of the crud kind of off of my dishes and ready to go in the dishwasher. While normally I do go over everything with a sponge, let's real quick test this washer and see how it can do with some dishes that haven't been rinsed. And about two-ish hours later, we have some dishes that 
for all intents and purposes are pretty darn clean. Especially considering that the bit of tomato was pretty well stuck on there to a point where I couldn't really scrub it off. I think this machine really does a good job. Now that we know how to set up a wash cycle, load the dishwasher, and about its general performance, Let's talk about the one thing that actually matters the most when you're choosing a dishwasher, the noise. This machine runs pretty quiet. However, I wouldn't say it's quieter than any standard or full-size dishwasher if you loaded it correctly. If by chance when you loaded the machine, something was leaning up against one of the interior walls, you will hear a relatively annoying buzzing as the entire wash cycle takes place. A quick solution I found is to just fill the pitcher included with the dishwasher up about halfway and then set it on one of the sides, kind of pushing it a little bit so it'll stay there. It dampens the sound a lot for sure, but it's definitely not going to be completely silent. And now the absolute biggest factor of them all, the cost. I would honestly consider this dishwasher a luxury item, especially given its size compared to its price. For a whopping $397.99 on Amazon, that is, you might be able to find it cheaper somewhere else, you too can bring home a little bit over two cubic feet of dishwashing goodness. However, for essentially that same price, if you had the space for it and the hookups for it, you could also just buy a full-size dishwasher. But if you're like me and you don't have the option of installing a full-size dishwasher, or if you just don't have the under-counter space for it, I think this is a pretty good deal. Especially if you're very, very tired of upper back pain from leaning over your sink to hand wash dishes for 45 minutes a day. With all of this being said, I think you should consider yourself. Do you think the price is right? Do you think that it would work for you and your family? Would it work in your home? Do you have the space for it? There's tons of things to consider here. And while it might've been a great purchase for me, it may not be right for you and your family. And that's something that you should really research to see if it might be something you need. That being said, I know it's the week of Thanksgiving. Dishes are gonna be piling up and Black Friday is on the way. If you are one of the people who likes to shop during that day, Try and see if you can score a deal on this and maybe the price will make it worth your while. All right, party people. Well, thank you so very much for watching this far. I know this isn't quite like all of my videos that I usually do, but I really wanted to do a product review for you because honestly, this dishwasher has been life-changing for me. This was a blessing. It really was for me. It's helping me do dishes quicker. It's helping me keep the house just that much tidier, which is really important for me in my cleaning journey. So with all of that, I really, really wanna thank you so, so much for watching this far. If you've made it to the end, congratulations. I'm so proud of you. And even if you didn't make it to the end, that's okay, I'm proud of you too. If you wanna see more content like this or have other products you want me to review, let me know and I'll see if it's in the budget. But in any case, I really hope I can keep making content that you love and that might help you in your journey. Oh, but real quick, before I do let you go, please don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed this video and comment down below what are some cleaning gadgets that really helped change your life. All right, friends, well, it's about time for me to go. So I love you, stay cool, stay cubed, and I will see you in the next one. Mwah. Toodles.